Uh, my name is Rene, Rene Ramirez. I'm an SEO over at Top Hat Rank. Um, I am a YEX certified. For those of you who are not familiar with YEX, basically what it is, I talk very fast. I'm very sorry. Um, I will try and articulate. Okay, promise. Um, okay, so uh, for those of you who are not familiar with YEX, basically it takes a, uh, if you're a small business, um, any type of business, basically it'll take your name, address, telephone number, put them into directories, it'll update your Google My Business, all that good stuff. So. Uh, I'm YEX certified, I'm also AdWords certified, and my favorite, I'm also Google Analytics certified. Um, that is Hank, we will run into him later. All right, so now you've listened to Sarah, you've listened to Arson, and you've SEO'd all of the things. Or you went the quick route and uh, decided to go for pay-per-click, okay? So we have all the traffic going to our site, now what, all right? Uh, so we're going to go through your measuring success, the guys using and understanding Google Analytics. Uh, you guys read this. I just basically want to get a full uh, understanding of the person work. Uh, who here actively is using Google Analytics on a site that they manage or own? Okay. Who has never opened up Google Analytics in their life? One, two, okay, three, okay. Uh, when we are working at the agency, basically, we are dealing with sites that are multi-million dollar companies all the way up into your small dentist office. Uh, when we do analytics audits, basically, we are looking in the same area. Whether it's a huge site or whether it's a small site, there's an area in which we focus on. Uh, this is where I'm going to take you, basically, because a lot of people, why people use Google Analytics, but they don't necessarily use Google Analytics because some of it can be a little, little bit intimidating. It's a lot of numbers, a lot of data. So what we're going to do is we're going to help you to understand certain terms, certain ideas on how analytics works, and tell you exactly where to focus. Because in the end, whether you're big, whether you're small, what you look at in the inside, it's all the same. So there's really nothing to be able to do. Now, what is Google Analytics? What exactly is Google Analytics? Um, just so you guys know, I actually failed the analytics test like four times before I got it. Um, and, I blame Google because Google sucks <laughs> at explaining things. Thank you. Their definitions, definitions to Google are more rules. They're, they're more rules that, and they leave so much to interpretation. So where if you ask what is analytics, here's our thousand page knowledge base. Or here's the analytics academy. They really don't give a definition. That was one of the things I learned about when I first started with analytics. You have to understand the terms. Understand the terms how they work together, and then everything will fall, fall into place. So let's start from here. So what is analytics? Now, like I said, Google does not provide any type of real definition. So I had to go to Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia, Google Analytics, premium web analytics service offered, uh, offered by Google that tries to report website traffic. They have all this extra information on the bottom about them acquiring Urchin because, as we all know, Google, if they can't figure something out, they buy it. Okay. Now, the thing is, is that this still doesn't fully explain what analytics is. So we've got dictionary.com. Um, Merriam-Webster has a horrible definition, so we had to go to dictionary.com, the, the new school. Okay. So when we look at the definition of analytics ex itself, it's the analysis of data, typically large sets of data, uh, by the use of mathematics, statistics, and computer software. Now that's more in line with what it is that we are working with with Google Analytics. So that's mission. There we go. Okay, so web analytics service that tracks and reports website traffic for analysis by use of their free computer software. This is what we're going to use. Okay, we have that basic definition. We have our starting point. Okay. First thing, how's analytics installed? We've already established a lot of us use Google Analytics, so we really don't need to get into the installation of it. These are more like tips. So, first thing, uh, for those of you who actually have it, for the two of you, <laughs> um, do you want to make sure? Now, Google, they have it, one account to rule them all. Use a single Gmail account or Google account for all of your business and website search console for all of that data. You don't want to use the same thing that you're sending your love letters to your wife or your girlfriend or something like that. You want them to have them separated. Now, the thing about with the Google Analytics actually links with the search console, it links with your Google Tag Manager, it links with your Google Ads, everything links together. So if you have things in all these different accounts, it can get pretty messy. 
audits, we have had to basically combine all of these things together, give to the client, and they're like, ooh, that was easy. It's like, well, you we should have done it. So try and have everything organized into one spot. Now, your Google Analytics code. This is basically what makes the stuff work, okay? Your analytics, you can find, for those of you who already have your uh, analytics account set up, you can locate your analytics code by navigating to the admin. The admin is the small icon on the left-hand side, on the bottom. I forgot. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here's, here's uh, to access your admin. Uh, you go into the left-hand panel and hit on the little yeah. icon. Um, under tracking info and tracking code. Now, the global site tag that you see there is the little analytics snippet that basically makes everything do what it's supposed to do. Now, uh, this is WordPress, so we'll get into how we actually do it after, in a second. Um, but your tracking ID, now your tracking ID is not a secret code. I can actually go onto your website, find out in about 30 seconds if you have the code and if you have it installed properly. Um, but you will need this code so if you wanted to install it into any type of third party installation, such as Monster Insects. Now, as far as installation, since this is WordPress, we use a plugin. Okay. If you use any other type of site, you might have to basically uh, put it in manually. Nice thing about WordPress, you can just plug it in. Everything's groovy. Now, I don't have anything that I particularly recommend, but we use a lot of clients who do use Monster Insights. Monster Insights is a very popular plugin that was originally actually Yoast Analytics. Yoast wanted to get more deeper into the SEO, so we took that part and gave it to Monster Insights, which turned it into this ginormous, huge uh, um, a plugin that is actually has a lot of gadgets, widgets, all that stuff. Personally, I prefer analytics because it will take you a little bit deeper. PSA, for those, you'll, you'll know it when I say it. For those of you who are going to use Google Tag Manager to install your Google Analytics and you are going to migrate from a plugin to your Google Tag Manager, do remember to disengage your old plugin because what can happen is you can actually have two instances of, of, tag, of uh, analytics inside your site which can uh, turn into duplicate sessions, duplicate hits, all that stuff. The biggest sites that we deal with are the worst culprits of this. So they try and modernize but then they forget to pull the old stuff out. So please do remember to do that. Okay. Now how does analytics work? Okay, I gotta watch this here. Um, the Adventures of Bob. Now the reason why we're using Bob is because Bob is representing our user. Our user is basically you, so I'm just gonna call him Bob. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So Bob visits Hank's Time Travel uh, Time uh, Hank's Time Time Travel Emporium .com. Hank's Time Travel Emporium .com is actually a website that I created, which I used to test uh, plugins. Uh, things like that. So uh, that's why we have here. Now, uh, for step one, uh, Bob is, uh, um, let's see, there we go. Okay, so step one, uh, Bob is online shopping. Okay, he's looking for a towel. Now, for step two, the click, let's say, for example, Bob was searching for towels through, uh, through Google search. Bob locates a link within Google search, clicks on it, sends him to the landing page, which we have established uh, for the, the towel page. Okay. Now, once uh, in step two, once Bob reaches that page, the browser loads that page that contains the Google Analytics code. Okay. Now, step three, when the analytics, when the, excuse me, um, so the when the analytics when the page in the browser loads the analytics code, what it does is it causes that, that analytics code to fire, creating a client ID. Now, that client ID is actually composed of a random number and a timestamp of when that client ID was created. We'll get to more on that in a second, okay? So we have the creation of the client ID, and then step four, once the client ID is created, that information, the client ID, is then sent to Google servers for processing. We must note that this is Bob's very first time visiting the site. Now, Google takes the information from the client ID and step, in step five, the analytics script is actually what they call an asynchronous code, which basically means that when one process is working, we can still go to another process and have that work as well. So basically, information is going back and forth. It's constant. So when there is a click as an action, there's a reaction over here. Information is constant going. It does not stop. 
Okay. Now, in step six, what basically Google Service does is it takes that client ID code and it puts it into two different areas. In step six, the Google takes the client ID code and stores it into the browser page in the form of a cookie. Okay. And in step seven, the client ID code is then inserted into the Google Analytics uh, dashboard. You can actually locate this through the, um, the user explorer that we don't want to get into that. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but you can actually locate your client ID within the Google Analytics dashboard. Now, the cookie that is in the browser and the user ID and the, the client ID that is in the analytics, that is the link between the two. So whatever happens here is happening here. That client ID is your link. The client ID is you. That's your personal number. That is your user number. A lot of people are like, oh, no users and stuff. It's a client ID. So if we start to understand what that is, we'll start to figure out the process and then things will start to fall into place a little bit. Now, once we have that client ID established, then the session begins. Now, before we do, we want to understand a little bit more about the session. Now, the session is defined as the period of, the period of time that Bob is active on the site. Now, session is a period of time. It's a period of time within a 30-minute window. There are certain things in which can alter how that time is done, or, or how, that, how that time is calculated. Now, the first thing is by default, if Bob is inactive on the site for 30 minutes or more, then the session ends. This means that if Bob is on the site and he doesn't do anything for 30 minutes, it's over. We're done. Two, if Bob leaves our site and returns within 30 minutes, it's still counted as part of the session. So if Bob accidentally closes a window, leaves, come back, he's, he's viewing a recipe, he clicks on the site, he goes to the kitchen, within 30 minutes all of a sudden he decides that he needs to, to look at the recipe one more time and he comes back within the 30 minutes, the session continues. And then finally, any, any interaction that Bob makes with the pages, such as the click of the button or anything, will actually refresh the session. So imagine this long period of time, non-linear back here, you have this long period of time as an hour you have a window of 30 minutes. That 30 minute window is basically constantly ticking down. Now, if it ticks down all the way to the bottom, the session is end, is over, unless uh, Bob actually clicks on something else, which would therefore move this window of time to the point within that hour that he clicks restarting the session. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but when you start to really think outside of the box and how it works, then it, it, it will start to make a little bit more sense and then you can start to calculate your users and, and how they function. And, but at least this is the basic premise behind what a session is. Okay. All right. So now in step eight. Now we know, uh, we know that the, the cookie that's inside the browser knows a lot about Bob. Uh, basically, it knows everything as far as where he came from. There, he came from Google, so the, the cookie knows that. We know whether or not he's paid or if he's organic traffic. We know his location. We know if he's on desktop, if he's on, if he's on mobile. This is all the, the types of information that that cookie within the browser is, is collecting and is processing. Now, over to step nine, this is, actual, this is an actual recording of a session. Now, we have tools that we use during an audit so that we can see what happens inside of your site when we are clicking about. We will typically take about five pages of your site, begin a recording, and then we can see what happens on each page that we click. Now, in this case here, we can see, this is the, uh, uh, an example of us actually landing on the shop page, uh, not the tell page. But as you can see, this is the beginning of the session. It contains, during the session, we have information such as the current uh, URL, uh, the analytics code. Now, the source medium, which we'll get to in a second, that source medium is information about where we came from and how we got there. So once again, all of that information is being found out with every click. This is one section of, of uh, one section in part of the session. If we click on another URL, we're going to get another snapshot with all the information about that page. So all of this information as far as what's going on in the session is then getting sent to Google for processing and then returned back into step three, which is our Google Analytics platform. 
Now, what is Hank, who is actually the owner of Hank's Time Travel and Forum, what does he know? He basically knows everything that was in, number one, Bob's um, uh, cooking. So we, he knows about the domain, he knows about the location, he knows about all that information. He knows what happened during the session on his site. So he knows where he clicked. He knows if he bought. He knows every single type of action that he had. So he has a combination of all that information put into his analytics dashboard so that he can review and analyze. Now, he knows all the information about Bob except his name and any personal information. That is a huge no-no, okay? It's a huge no-no. Let me repeat that. It's a huge no-no. Now, some people will actually do their clients a favor by creating these forms on their sites, name, address, telephone number, on that stuff, uh, so that they can send, uh, you know, you give me your stuff, I'll give you information. Uh, sometimes somebody might create it so that the information will actually stay in the form and create a dynamic URL that contains Bob's information, Bob's telephone number, Bob's e uh, email address, all that information. The problem is, is that if I see your, that information within Google Analytics, that means that that information is getting sent to Google. That is numero uno bad thing you can possibly do, number one. If you ever see any type of client information in any of these URLs, you need to stop what you're doing immediately, talk to a developer, and have them, um, 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 what term, salt, salt. Uh, they need to salt it, they need to encrypt that information. Because if Google finds out, they will lock down your account like nobody's business. They will never get that. So please be careful with that. Okay. So this is. <laughs> so I, I got lost on that tangent there. Um, so this is the right of information as far as what happens every single time a user comes to the site. Get a cookie, transfer the information, and then everything comes out in the end with Google Analytics dashboard. Okay? Now the ABC cycle. Now back in 2013. Trying to get everything as fast as I can. Back in 2013, now Google and, uh, introduced what they referred to as the acquisition behavior conversion cycle. Now, a lot of you who have opened up analytics at any point in time of your life have seen this before. There's just chances that you never quite knew that there was an actual name attached to it. Now, the acquisition uh, behavior conversion cycle is actually this area right here. All of these are set reports, set reports in which Google thought that, hey, this might be something that you guys might be interested in doing. So instead of setting everything up yourself, we're gonna offer this to you so that you can look at it, okay? But this is the area here, which they actually dug under the channels report here. Now, we're gonna get a much deeper into this in a moment. Now, as far as what's actually in the acquisition behavior conversion reports, uh, we have the channels on our left, which we're going to dig a little bit deeper into in a second. Uh, the ABC starts with the acquisition. Now, here's where we see our numbers as far as our users, our new users, and our sessions. Bob was a new user. Bob did not have the um, did not have the analytics cookie that contained the client ID in his browser. When the analytics ID fired, it realized that there was not a cookie anywhere in sight, so therefore it created one for him. Okay, A new user, uh, uh, um, that would be a new user. A user is a combination of both a new user and a returning user. Okay, Everybody might think that that is unique users. It's actually a combination of the two. So you kind of got to be careful as far as what it is that you're thinking about when you're looking at these statistics. And then, of course, we have the session data. Now, I personally use session data to determine what, how, uh, how my website is doing. Um, because that is the period of time in which people are actually doing stuff on your website. New users, users, stuff like that. Okay, but this is what's happening while the, customers, while the clients are on your site. So this is why we use sessions. Users were actually only reintroduced back into the fold within this year. So, Google always wanted sessions to be what you use to gauge exactly how everything is going. Okay. Now we move on to behavior. Behavior is more going to be at your page level. Acquisition is how they got there, who got there. Behavior is at the page level. So here's where we're going to see bounce rate. Okay. Your bounce rate, for those of you who are not familiar with it, the bounce rate is if Bob goes to the site, doesn't do anything for 30 minutes, times out, and 
That's it. That's considered a bounce. Basically, it means that he got there, didn't do anything, no clicks, no nothing, bounce. They don't want bounces because basically it could mean a myriad of problems. What kind of problems? We can do that in another session. It's, it, th there's a lot of way to analyze in which you can, you can figure out how things are working through analytics. And then, of course, the last part of the conversion of the ABC uh, cycle is conversions. Conversions are very important because that's how we gauge exactly how your site is doing. Everybody builds a site. You build a site because you want people to do something, whether you're selling something, whether you're, you're providing content, uh, whether you're trying to collect emails. We need to know how our site is doing. So this is why we have conversions. Okay? So you have, the, you have the, the how, you have the where, and then you have the did they buy. So this is the complete cycle. Now, I can't do analytics without mentioning the audience overview. Now, the audience, oh, the audience uh, report, which is this section right here, it's a new report that was actually reached. Everything that you find in the audience report is basically based upon um, uh, uh, dimensions, dimensions, which we're going to get into in a second. Basically, it's more descriptive things about your users, such as technology, such as location, uh, such as de demographics. Um, these are things that are basically used a lot for marketing. So you'll find a lot of these, unlike like people who are working with AdWords and stuff like that, who want to know about the information about the users who are currently, who have used their site. So if they want to target more of those types of users, users this is where they're going to find that information. When we're doing an analytics audit, we actually don't go in simply because it's, it's, it's extra information that is not necessary to deduce the health of the site. Okay. So it's marketing. Um, and so as you can see, filter by language, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to get as heavy into this, but it is here. This, as you see it right now, was actually introduced in uh, early this year. Um, so a lot of it is still new as far as, they, as, far as how they have it set up, such as the... Uh, the, um, the core analysis, which has been in beta forever, uh, which is basically a fancy word for grouping. Right. Um, feel free, once we finish through here, you will actually have the building blocks and the knowledge to be able to go through here comfortably and understand what's going on. Okay, So that's the audience report. Now, audience report versus the acquisition report. Now, here are some of the differences. I felt that if you understand the differences, then you'll understand why we're focusing on this one key area. Now, like I mentioned, the audience report, that this section was actually reintroduced back in uh, to, uh, 2017. Uh, the ABC reports is actually kind of uh, the original dashboard. Um, back when Google had acquired um, it from Urchin, sorry about that, uh, when they acquired it from Urchin, um, they had, Urchin had a, a particular setup in, in which they like to use, which was similar to this, but things were still in their infant, infant phases. Um, so back in 2013, when they created the, uh, the ABC reports, how, that, how you see it there actually has been in existence all this time. Really not much has changed. The only thing that's changed is where they put it. So now they stuffed it way into the channels. Um, the audience report, it focuses more on attributes. So once again, uh, technology, all that stuff. While the ABC reports focus on acquisition, focuses on the behavior, and it focuses on the money. So these are the things that we're actually more interested in, which is why, once again, we're focus here. Now, the audience report, it's not completely ready out of the box, meaning that if you want to learn things about demographics and stuff like that, you actually have to click and have it set, and in some cases, have something else linked, or modify the code. So if you really want it, you got to work for it. Okay? And then the audience report actually consists of a lot of third-party data. Now, I know a lot of people have, cons have heard of the Google... Uh, the double click um, things used for all the ads, it's basically buried in every single tag you can possibly think of. Because um, if you actually do a tag crawl inside, it, it, it's all over the place. But the thing is, is that a lot of that information, such as the demographics, such as the interest, such as the medium income, all of that is actually taken from double click information. Um, while the, uh, the ABC reports, um, measures paid, non-paid, and it's facts. It's the numbers. It's what's there. So it's real time. Now, what are the default channel groupings? Now, the default channel groupings are the most important part of the <laughs> analytics. Um, okay. okay, now the default channel groupings. 
as you see here. Basically, it's a roll-up of traffic sources. Uh, in the acquisition reports, I group several of the marketing activities together. Whether you're doing SEO, whether you're doing pay-per-click, those are marketing activities. Uh, it's something that you're spending your time on. Now, the channel groupings allow you to view and compare aggregated metrics by channel name as well as the individual traffic sources, medium and campaign name. Now, the marketing, acti marketing activities uh, such as uh, all right, here's what we're going to do because I'm running out a little bit of time. Now, once again, like I stated, all users are basically going to fall through these one of these channels. So we're going to expand on exactly how they get there in the first place. Now, to better understand the default channels, we need to understand the source and medium. Okay. Now, the source is the origin of your traffic, such as a search engine or a domain. So basically, any domain in which your user came from. So whether it be Google, whether it be Bing, Facebook, Imager, it's basically a domain where they came from. Last click. Okay. Uh, now, the medium is the general category as it directly relates to your traffic. So, pay-per-click, referral, organic. It's a description of how they got there. So the source is where they came from, the medium is how they got there, okay? Now, when we put them together, we get a complete information about the user. So now we have Google Organic, we have Bing Organic, Facebook, Referral. So together, they tell a story. Now, the default, uh, default channel definitions and rules. Okay, so now we know where the user came from, which is the source. We know how they got there, which is the medium. And we also know that every user is going to pass through one of these channels uh, before we can analyze the data. Okay. But how do we know which channel analytics is going to throw the user at? Now, Google provides a set of set definitions here, which are basically rules. Okay. Um, now, when the user arrives to the site, the source and the medium of the user is going to match up to at least one of these definitions. Also, the order that you see is the uh, is the order in which Google is going, in which analytics is going to try to determine which um, channel the user belongs in. So, say for example, so say for example, um, user number one arrives to the site via Google Organic. Analytics will start from the top and try and figure: is it direct traffic? Now, sort exactly matches direct. Basically, direct traffic is anybody. If you have a bookmark, uh, if you click on a link and it goes from that point. Direct, or if they type in your URL, it goes from that point directly into the site. Since we know that the user is Google Organic and not direct, we skip. The next rule then is, is it organic search, which the medium exactly matches organic. We know that the medium is organic because it came from Google Organic, so therefore it would fit into the organic search channel. Now, example number two, we have Pinterest that came in on a referral. Okay, so we go through number one, it's not direct. Number two, organic search, no, it came from uh, Pinterest, so therefore it's not organic. So then we go down to number three, which could be determined as a social, I would have to double check as far as how Google uh, categorizes it, um, but if we go all the way down to number five, then we have a referral, which is the medium, uh, 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 medium exactly matches the referral. When the source medium comes out, uh, Google does identify that user by the source of medium, in which, like I just mentioned, which is Pinterest referral. So therefore, since it follows the definition of a referral, which the medium exactly matches the referral, this is where the channel is going to lie. Okay. It does sound a little bit complicated, but after a while, it does start to, you'll start to see the terms, you'll start to see the patterns, you'll start to see how they connect together. Okay. So this okay. So therefore, once everything is sorted, we have our handy dandy little chart, which will help us determine next. So now, what does Google Analytics measure? Now, this next series of slides, basically, in which we're we're going to go through a bunch of different report windows and just see how we can uh, manipulate them, basically. Now, the real-time report that we see here. Is probably what everybody opens. Everybody's seen the real time report. If you've had the analytics, you've opened up the real time report. Uh, it's the first set of reports that is in the left hand side of the top. It will tell you exactly what's going on now. So, as you can see here, we have 11 people on the site. It's the current users, and we can also see exactly where they are currently within the um, 
uh, within the site, okay? So if you wanna know what's going on now, real-time report is where it's gonna happen. By the way, these next set of slides, they're actually all taken from a, um, Google actually provides an analytics demo. Um, like myself, I have a site that gains no traffic because it's like blocked um, from crawlers. Uh, so what they did was they actually have one of their, um, uh, uh, their merchant stores that's completely open in which you can um, get access to that analytics demo and do whatever you want. Nice thing about analytics is that it really won't break so you could mess the heck out of it, and all you have to do is like open it and close it, and you'll get right back to where you started. Um, now, I left a link at the end in which it'll show you exactly how to get that analytics demo. But you can see, uh, but everything from here is, is from that demo. So, uh, now, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, now, before we can continue, we actually do need to understand uh, dimensions and metrics. Now, the image on the left, it's a tool that uh, Google has, which is called the, dimension, the Dimensions and Metrics Explorer. Now, it's nothing that you need to go out and use right now. Uh, basically, it's a tool for developers who are pulling data from analytics using the API. Uh, so it's just a quick little thing which they can go in, pull in the information without having to mess someone's account up, basically. Um, now, the reason why I have it here is because this, the screenshot actually shows the layout of, uh, um, uh, it's, it's a great visual representation of dimensions and metrics side by side. Um, with all the dimensions on the left and with all the, uh, the, with all the metrics on the right. Now, um, dimensions are basically, they are a descriptive attribute or characteristics of data. Oh, I do need to mention. Dimensions and metrics are basically, they're the top most level forms of data that analytics have. There's nothing, there's nothing topper, basically. Uh, with the dimensions and metrics, then everything else starts to fall under it. Um, let me, okay, let me back up a second. Okay, uh, now the dimensions, it's a descriptive attribute, uh, characteristics of data, for example, a city campaign source or a keyword, while well, we have metrics, which is a quantitative measurement of your data, which basically means that it's any type of sum or total. Um, only certain, only certain dimensions can be filtered by certain metrics, which is the reason why I have this tool up here in the first place. I knew that there was a point. Um, if you are looking up, say for example, you're looking up sessions and you want to know if uh, you can divide it by sessions within a certain city, then basically you can use this tool, locate the session, and you can see if the city or whatever it is that you want to filter, if it's blocked out. It's blocked out, then that means you cannot filter it by that particular dimension. If it's still enabled, then that means that they'll work together. Nobody ever remembers dimensions in metric. Nobody ever remembers metrics in dimensions. I read bloggers who basically will write something about a dimension and a metric, and then you'll find a correction next week saying that it shows a metric. Um, so don't expect you to really under, uh, keep this part, but here on the bottom, is all your dim your dimensions, and the the this part of the graph is all of your metrics. So now we're able to see exactly how it works within the ABC cycle. Um, this here is the acquisition channel report, which is what we've basically been using. Um, now here on the upper left hand side, this is a drop down that will allow you to select your different uh, dimensions. Now, once again, only certain dimensions can be filtered by certain metrics. So if it's not able to be filtered, it will not show up in this dropdown. Um, this dropdown here will actually determine what this trend is showing here. At the moment, we're seeing users on a daily basis. If we were to change the dropdown to sessions, then we would see sessions on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, over to the right, we see our date range. Um, it has already a couple of presets, such as seven days, 30 days, whatnot. Usually, uh, we'll just keep it on 30 days, and you can see the trend for the past 30 days. You can set it as far back as you've had analytics installed within your website. Honestly, after like three, four years, it will choke, so don't expect it to go far down that too far, unless you're pulling information from the API. 
But if you really want to see trends over a period of time, then this is where you would set that timeline. Um, here on the top, we have our primary dimensions, which is this color, uh, this column here. So we have this set two sources, which as we had for the definition, we know that it is where the client came from. So we have our, our Google, our Bing, blah, 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 uh, which is set by um, uh, organic uh, sources. Now, next, we have the uh, source medium report, which is still in, in the acquisition. So acquisitions, all traffic, source media. What this report does is it sorts all of your users by source and by the medium, how they got there. So where they came from, how they got there. As you can see in this example, we have a number of uh, from Google Organic, we have some direct, and we also have some referrals from another website, part of Google. Now, once again, what we have here, oh, actually, no, this one's a little bit different. Up here on the top are what we call segments. Now, segments are, t are global filters, um, which if you were to, basically the segments, the global filters that allow you to isolate groups, um, groups such as, uh, groups of sessions or users. Meaning, if we wanted to find out globally as, Segments are basically used so that we can isolate a, a certain um, uh, uh, section of user types uh, so that it will affect the entire analytics dashboard globally. So if we only wanted, so if we only wanted to find out what were the what were uh, the organic users and only get the data for organic users, this is when we would use sessions, uh, the segments. Same with returning users, which is how we have it here. We have it separated by all users, which is the first segment, and then we have returning users, which is the second segment. When used together, then we're able to see a comparison of, uh, between the two, and also in very tiny print, it will also give you the difference as far as uh, um, the difference between the uh, users and the returning users. Let's see, now we are in the behavior session, um, behavior site content landing page. This is the landing page report. Landing page report is very important because then you can see exactly how users got to your site. Um, this example, landing page, we can see the number, how many, exactly how many people are entering from the home page. Landing page does not always mean organic. It can be from referral, it can be organic, or it can be from email. But this is the primary entrance that was made into your site. Um, here we are able to set um, two comparisons by date range. So not only can we set the amount of time that we have, uh, that we are focusing with the trend, but we can set it to say compare 30 days now compared to 30 days in the past. So we can see if we've made progress. Now, as you can see, this is a 30-day comparison of, of uh, Google's Merchant um, website, and they had a 4.75 reduction since last month. Okay, same with their conversion. So they lost in their selling. Okay, so using the uh, the comparison, which is what we do a lot, we're able to show clients exactly if they've made progress, if there was an algorithm change, like Sarah was talking about, in which you saw rankings dive. We can see exactly what happened with the site. Okay. okay, and this is the conversion overview. Now the conver conversion, once again, very important because this is how we're going to know exactly um, uh, how, it's, it's, your, it's your progress. I mean, this is why we build the site in the first place. We build the site to sell stuff, then we want to know if we're selling stuff and if we're selling good. Um, Now, this drop down here, since this is the goal, the conversion area, basically everything is focused on its uh, conversion center. Um, this drop down here will allow you to see the view if, say, for example, you have multiple goals that you have within your site. So you can either see all of the conversion data, or if you have more than one, as you can see here, Google has these separate goals. Um, for the website, so you can drop, you can uh, uh, pull them down and isolate that particular goal. <coughs> um, and we have a conversion overview here, so at a, at a, a quick glance we can see if we are doing good compared to last month or not. 
Now, we also have the Gold Destination URL here. Now, this Gold Destination URL is where our conversion is happening, or where our goal is set. Now, as far as creating goals, most of the goals that are used in the websites that we have uh, audited are basically using destination goals. Now, destination goal is a URL that we want the clients to reach at the very end in order to get the conversion. So if, they, if you are selling something and you have a client go and the user is going through a, um, uh, putting in the credit card information, blah, blah, blah. Once they finish with that, with all that information and they make the sale, a lot of times a, um, a website will have a thank you page. Once the client, once the user reaches that thank you page, then we know that that goal is complete. So therefore we use that thank you page as our destination. Now setting up a desk, there are other ways in which we can get goals. Yeah. There are other ways in which we can, we can set up goals, but like I said, destination URLs is the most uh, popular. Um, navigate to the admin uh, section under goals, and then goal setup. Now, when you're setting up goals, just always select custom. Everything is going to take you to destination. It doesn't matter. All of those templates, they're all going to go to destination. Don't confuse yourself, just do okay. custom. Um, enter your name of the goal, in this case, uh, goal type destination. Um, now, be sure to include the, this, in this section here, we're going to want to put the destination URL. Make sure that you put down the correct destination URL. If you have any type of typo, then it will not, uh, it will not fire, therefore you will not count the, um, the goal. Uh, it happens a lot, you'd be surprised. So do be sure and double check to make sure that you have the correct URL. Now, the goal funnel is not necessary. What this section here, it is optional. What it is is basically if you have, uh, if you set a goal funnel, then you're able to see exactly how your, uh, your, your customers were going through the funnel. So say for example here, we know that in order for a client, to, uh, for a user, before they make that, the sale, they will have to pass through the cart. So since we know that they pass through the cart, we have the cart as the first, as the top of the funnel. Then next, they're going to put in their information, and then next, they're going to put in their payment information, and next, then finally, they are going to reach the confirmation, and then finally, they're going to reach our destination. By setting up this funnel, there is another report in which we can see how the clients are, how the users are going through this funnel, and if they drop out. So as we can see here, they went through the cart, but we had a few users that dropped out during the information phase. Now, if you have uh, users that are dropping out during the information phase, then it's a possibility that it could be too long, they don't want to get their information, or maybe there's a technical error in which uh, users were dropping out. And as it goes further, more users dropping out. So this will tell us where we need to make these improvements so that we can get everybody who started here at the end. Okay. Um, basically, analytics, it's not intimidating. <laughs> There's a lot to it. But they say that it takes an, an hour to learn, a lifetime to use. Um, if you, you just have to remember, you're not going to break it. You can do it, you can break it. Okay, I like, you can break it. I've seen clients, huge clients, multi-million dollar clients, who will just start stuffing everything in there. You can break it if you really try, but nine times out of 10, it's really hard. So don't be afraid to go in there. Use the, use the, 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 the terms that we've used, such as sessions. Get yourself an understanding. These are all some really great links, some of the information that we have um, that I was working on previously, you'll find it here, Analytics Help Center. These are some really great writers, Analytics and Optimize Smart. Check them out, read their, read, read their blogs. Um, a lot of really good information in human form and digestible. Um, so they, they really don't tip time, uh, tiptoe around stuff. So um, yeah, just go in, explore, learn your stuff, improve. Thank you. I think I can take a few questions. I
I do like questions. I, I do questions about times. Anybody? Yes, please. Okay, so you were showing the card funnel earlier. Okay. And I actually had some clients that use like these flying card plugins that basically when you click on the card, it flies with this JavaScript that brings the card in from the right. Okay. And obviously, it doesn't take you to the card necessarily. Okay. So how do you avert that? Because you're still on the same page. It's just from the script that says, like, okay, that's a good card. It depends on how, I mean, basically, it depends on, on how it's set up. Whenever you set up analytics, you want to make sure, absolutely sure that your analytics is in every single page that a user might read. Uh, one way that we do that is if you know this path, this file, if it's, say, for example, some form of you know, dynamic where it comes up, or there's a hashtag in there, or something, it's slightly different. Um, what we want to do is see, yeah, what we want to do is basically, what we do is actually crawl the sites. Um, so we can see where the analytics is installed. If there's something in there, and we're, or it's like a subdomain, possibly, or is it just part of the? It's part of the. It's part of it. Okay. Basically, you want to see if it can be read. You want to find out how it's read. Okay. And you want to make sure that all the information in there is trackable. There's so many different ways out there in which uh, so many different programs and all that that they're all different. So what you got to do is focus on the code in there. Make sure that that tag is in there, and then you can read it. If you read it, then you can start pulling the funnel to see information. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. I'm sorry that you have to do with e commerce for Google, but it's a whole other animal. Yeah, no, it's a whole, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's kind of fun. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.